Hello, and welcome to my presentation. I'm Stephen Sharp, and today we'll be discussing electric solid propellants, or ESPs. But before we dive in and start discussing electric solid propellants, let's first look at a few aspects of solid propellants and electric propulsion to see what makes them unique and see why we might want to combine them. Solid propellants are known for their relatively low specific impulse and high thrust and energy density. The throttle can be controlled passively by choosing a specific grain configuration when building the solid rocket motor, and this can produce a regressive, progressive, or neutral thrust profile, but there is no way to actively throttle the motor after the burn is started. The combustion of a solid rocket motor can be stopped, but generally only once permission, using either explosive charges detonated on the casing so that the uh, combusting gases may escape, or injecting extinguishing gases directly into the combustion chamber. The propellants used for solid rocket motors are also usually highly reactive, especially with high performance propellants. By contrast, electric propulsion has a much higher specific impulse than solid propellants at the cost of massively reduced thrust, usually a small fraction of a single newton. However, EP systems can be actively throttled, started, and restarted with ease. Most EP systems require complex and expensive components with high voltages, strong currents, and intense electric or magnetic fields. In fact, sometimes these fields can even jeopardize the spacecraft's electronic components, like on the DART mission where testing an experimental electric thruster had to be scrubbed due to its adverse effects on the rest of the spacecraft. Now, what if we could combine the throttle control and restartability of electric propulsion with the simplicity and high thrust of solid propellants? Would it result in a super propellant that takes the best aspects of both, or be an ineffective compromise between the two? The development of electric solid propellants didn't originate in the aerospace industry, but in fact in the automotive industry in the 1990s, with an ammonium nitrate-based contact-safe vehicle airbag propellant that was designed to be non-toxic and safe. In 1999, the Air Force was interested in these theoretical electric solid propellants, so it decided to fund development of a new propellant called Aspen, which was an ammonium nitrate base with a few additives to increase its electrical conductivity. The contract was awarded to the company Digital Solid State Propulsion, or DSSP, which emerged as the primary, and now sole, developer of electric solid propellants. In 2005, DSSP announced a brand new electric solid propellant called HiPEP, which was a hydroxyl ammonium nitrate and polyvinyl alcohol-based propellant with a little bit of pure ammonium nitrate added in. In 2011, Wayne Sakwa of DSSP patented the first ESP thruster stack design, and in 2015, DSSP proposed a multipulse electric solid propellant motor to NASA, but the proposal was not picked up and didn't go anywhere. Now, in 2023, DSSP is mainly producing ESPs for pyrotechnics and VFX applications. The production of HiPEP is divided into two main steps, the synthesis of hydroxyl ammonium nitrate solution and the mixing of the HiPEP itself. Obviously, don't try this at home. The synthesis of the hydroxyl ammonium nitrate, or HAN, solution is a relatively complex process that takes place within chemical reactors at specified and sometimes cryogenic temperatures and pressures, and one possible method of synthesis is shown above the dashed line. Once the hydroxyl ammonium nitrate solution is obtained, it's relatively simple to make the HiPEP. Simply add 20% powdered polyvinyl alcohol and 5% powdered ammonium nitrate, both by weight, to the resulting hand solution. Then, pull in a vacuum chamber until the bubbling stops, and you're left with the propellant with gel or honey-like consistency which you may then either pull with a syringe or simply pour into a mold and bake until you get a hardened solid propellant. There are two main applications for electric solid propellants in the aerospace industry, pulse plasma thrusters and ESP thrusters. HiPEP can replace PTFE, also known as Teflon, in pulse plasma thrusters for ablative propulsion, but the performance isn't great due to its high electrical conductivity, which severely limits the generation of arcs within the thruster. Alternatively, ESPs can be used to create thrusters directly. By placing HiPEP between two electrodes, with layers of ablative insulation that burn with the HiPEP so that contact is always maintained between the electrodes and the propellant. The propellant only burns when a constant current is produced between the electrodes, 
So it can be started, restarted, and stopped simply by starting, restarting, and stopping the electric current, and can be throttled with the voltage. The main energy source in ESP thrusters is from the thermal expansion of gas from the propellant, not the ionization mode that's present in pulsed plasma thrusters. There are several potential advantages of ESP thrusters. First, there are no moving parts in the ESP thruster. It's all static. There are also no strong electric or magnetic fields generated that could jeopardize other parts of the spacecraft. However, it still maintains the high energy density characteristic of solids, and in fact has a slightly higher ISP than most solids at 240 to 270 seconds at sea level. There is also a very controlled ignition upon application of an electrical current, which is displayed in the video below. ESP thrusters are also easily throttleable, extinguishable, and restartable with the simple voltage or current variants as displayed in this video. HiPEP is also non-toxic and very unreactive with extreme impact resistance, spark resistance, flame resistance, resistance to extreme accelerations, and it can be handled very safely on the ground. Its flame resistance is emphasized in this video. and a bullet impact test was conducted in this video. HiPEP's extreme unreactivity and its impact and flame resistance stand in stark contrast to its ammonium nitrate base and most other high-performance propellants. However, electric solid propellants also have some distinct and some subtle disadvantages. While the specific impulse is slightly higher than most solid propellants, it's much lower than the average electric propulsion system, which is more likely to be in the 1000 to 2000 second range, rather than 270 seconds for ESPs. The combustion also does become uncontrollable at large scales like launch vehicle boosters, so it's most useful for small, micro, and nano satellite applications. For pulse plasma thrusters, Teflon is already a widely available, inert, safe, and somewhat non-toxic propellant, and it's more performant than ESPs in the first place. HiPEP is also not widely available, as at the time of this recording, DSSP is the only commercial producer of HiPEP. There also seems to be very low interest from space agencies and private companies alike in ESPs. They seem to be investing their time more readily in improving existing solid rocket motors and electric propulsion systems. In fact, electric solid propellants are most popular outside of the aerospace industry with multiple applications from concert pyrotechnics to movie effects to theme parks to explosive simulators. It's popular due to its very high unreactivity, its safety, and the dual thermal expansion and ionization modes. Since electric solid propellants are not widely used in the aerospace industry, I had to come up with a few potential use cases where using electric solid propellants could be more beneficial than solid propellants or electric propulsion alone. The first is extremely cheap, simple, throttleable thrusters for low budget missions where every dollar counts and the satellites are somewhat expendable, such as CubeSats and satellite constellations. There's also a small application for trajectory correction maneuvers for suborbital missiles. That was explored by DARPA. The second application is bimodal thrusters for single stage to orbit planes. While not necessarily electric solid propellants, DSSP is developing an electric liquid propellant that can be catalyzed for thermal expansion while in the atmosphere, and then switch to the ionization mode once in vacuum for higher efficiency. The third application is refuelable satellites, space stations, or lunar or Martian bases where storage safety is critical and any explosion of solid propellants could be life-threatening. This would make HiPEP an excellent choice. In conclusion, while a throttleable and restartable safe storage solid propellant sounds amazing in theory, in practice there aren't too many reasons to use it over existing solid propellants and electric propulsion systems. 
I think that the main advantages of electric solid propellants would be the high thrust and the simplicity of the system when compared to electric propulsion, and I believe that the most likely use case would be for CubeSats and for satellite constellations, where the budget is fairly thin, the satellites are pretty expendable, and it could be useful to have a cheaper, simpler electric propulsion system with no moving parts, no strong electric fields, and that can be throttled simply by switching current on and off. And that also provides much higher thrust compared to other electric propulsion systems. Overall, while I think that electric solid propellants are really cool, they have not yet proven themselves to be a viable alternative to either solid propellants or electric propulsion for aerospace applications. Thank you for watching my presentation. Please refer to the references on this slide for more information.